All right, Bubble Strikes here, and uh, today, whenever this is, I'm looking at dungeons. I looked at the raid, and I just wanted to take, I just wanted to take a look at dungeons and check out the lore, give an impression. I will be playing through the dungeons, or I'll try to. Uh, we'll see how my schedule goes. You know, if you know how I am. But we're gonna take a look. Look at the bosses, look at the lore, give opinions. I'm not really going to look at the loot, unless there's a mount. I'm going to look for a mount. Uh, I'm not going to really look at all the trinkets. And I'm not really going to look at the fights, per se. So, because I'll be doing them, and I'll see the fights. So, uh, Ankara, City of Echoes. So, this is the city at the ground floor where i was mistakenly at in my raid video uh the city of echoes this is the city underneath ara kara just beneath the city of threads lies ara kara city of echoes the deserted ruins of the city's previous lair there, Ansorex forces seek to harvest enough deadly materials to put the entirety of Nerubian civilization through ascension if necessary, whether they are willing or not. Interesting. Alright. First boss. Deserted when Arakar fell to ruin, the creature known as Avanox started as nothing more than a humble spider. Years of isolation in area ripe for feeding have left her free to grow, overseeing her children, her followers, and her territory with unmatched size and ferocity. Oh my god, a big spider boss. A big jumbo spider boss. She be looking crazy. And no mount, I don't care. Alright, next. Alright, did he have a mount? Nope. Next boss. While noob Zet has not yet earned his own ascension. He has been granted the honor of overseeing the Ankara harvesting operation. Fiercely tactical and immensely strong, Anub Zet will not hesitate to step in should his forces prove insufficient in the defense of Arakara. Alright, so he's just a big dude. Big Nerubian dude. Alright. Good to see them again. They're back. And then... Looks like more heads and stuff. Alright. Key Katal, the harvester, is one of Anserek's ascended. Key Katal has been charged with overseeing the harvest of black blood from the very feet of the Queen's own citadel. Harsh and unrelenting, Key Katal will stop at nothing to see the harvest continue, utilizing every enhanced ability at her disposal. Alright, let's see. Oh, hold up. They got hair? Nah, there's no shot these are playable. To me, there's no shot these are playable. Ever. No shot. Absolutely none. But this is interesting. This is an interesting development, though. Alright, let's come back. So that's Ara Kara. City of Echoes. So let's pull up the other uh, Ashkahet. This is all spoilers, by the way. It should be clear. Beta, dungeons. This is all spoiler for the dungeons. City of Threads. Deep within the City of Threads lies the transfer Transformatory, a once hollowed hall of Nerubian evolution. Now this place is used to transform worthy Nerubians into powerful ascended. The Weaver and Vizier will stop at nothing to see the process brought to a kindy, uh, grinding halt before it consumes Oz Ashkahet. So they're taking normal Nerubians. That we seen. And evolving them. Dude, they gotta do like the Pokemon evolution. Do, do, do. Like when they, they drink the black blood and then they just start spinning. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. I, I wanna see it like that. Alright. Orator Crix Vizic. 
Or Orator Crixvithic of the fifth strand desires nothing more than ascension and spends his days extolling the virtues of Queen Anserac. Okay, we know what he's about. In hopes of gaining her favor, despite his obsession, he is not without his defenses. Should any cross the Orator, it will find the sound of his bark is far worse than his bite. So he's loud? He's loud. Look at him. He's got hair now, too. Little oh, hair, dude. Look at that. Alright, hold up. Were there, was there a mount in here? Hold up. Hold up. Okay, I don't see no mount. I don't see no mount in here, either. Well, are there fancy items, though? With, like, some lore? No. Alright. Let's go to the next one. Twins, Nix, and Vix were born together, raised together, and trained in the ways of subterfuge and assassination together. A deadly pair, they've earned their ascension together as well. Together they now serve as fangs of the queen, taking out any would-be threats to Anserek's Anser reign with relish. Alright, so we're just rolling up in the city, beating up spider people. So it's pretty much same armor, same face. Yeah, never mind. I don't think they're allied races at all. No shot. That's what I thought. They don't look like... Oh, they're probably fraternal twins. Not identical. Oh, well, would you look at them? Look at them go. Alright, next one. The conglomeration. The coagulation. The coagulation. The Grand Splicer's evolutionary experiments often result in byproducts of waste and sludge. This abhorrent gloop may appear useless to some, but to Ezo's clever ingenuity, it offers excellent material components for more experimentation, and a vicious monstrosity waits to come to life. Oh. It's a goo! Oh my god, it's a big old goo! Uh, that's a big old goo. This shield better just be a goo. It don't even... Okay. This needs to just be a goop shield. A shield of goo. Alright. Alright, Ezo. Evolution has long been the central part of Nerubian life. And none possess greater passion or mastery of this process than Ezo. It's like the grand evolutionary over here. Or the High Evolutionary. Granted the methods of ascension by Anserek, Ezo pursues his pat this path of perfection with determination and little concern for who she serves to what end or at what cost. Wait. Okay, yeah, she... Oh. Good for her. Whoa, she glowing! Oh, is she gonna like evolve or something? See, I need to do the dungeons. She look cool. She look cool. Alright, so City of Threads on top of the City Echoes. The layers. Alright, now let's look at a dungeon of an area that we've seen before and talk about the ones at the top. So, up above we have cinder brew meadery under new management the cinder brew meadery is the focal point of unbound earthen culture and under the dotage of Wenbrandt, the meadery has crafted a fiery potent brew enjoyed by all earthen however the meadery has been the victim of hostile corporate accusation Acquisition by Goldie Barrenbottom, a goblin entrepreneur ushering in a new age of mass-produced cinder brew. Oh my god. She came in and bought up the market. What is that called? Oh my god, I can't think of the term. But she did it! Gentrification! 
she gentrifying or maybe that's a different term she came over this goblin came over now that this is revealed and was immediately like drop stacks of cash i'm buying this meadery hostile corporate takeover oh my god okay brewmaster aldrier barkeep and brewmaster for the meadery aldrier has more than meat on tap. Anyone who messes with the Cinder Room Meteorese new management presses, messes with Aldrier. And he has many friends in low places. Okay, so he's a new hire. He's new management. He's the new manager. Kind of. We got some thirsty patrons. Okay. Yeah, he's coming in new. He ain't, he ain't original. And then we got Ipa. The product of an industrial accident, Mead Elemental Ipa, is as angry about its ex oh my god, we're back in freaking Pandaria. As angry about its existence as it is about its meadery being disturbed, it is the full-bodied embodiment of the fiery punch of Cinderbrew Mead that will lay anyone who tangles with it out flat. Yo, okay, it's using one of the newer models, but with a little extra head, a little extra head there. I like it. I actually really like this. So it uses this model that we've been seeing in Dragonflight. I think these are new hands too. And has a little head. I like it. I actually really like this. What they did here. And you got the... Yeah, we could have got literally a repeat elemental and they gave us a little, a little new sauce here. I like that. The sticky stirry stirring stick. What? How is this the sticky? No. No. That ain't no. That's fake. All right, we got Bank Busby. Bank Busby. Bank's qualification for beekeeping may be dubious, but he does seem to have a knack for controlling bees and streamlining honey extraction operations. But his tampering with. Uh, Tambourine has limited the bee's freedom and sacrificed the meat's quality and it cannot stand. So we're going in there and we're taking we're taking it back for the the small business earthen from the cor corporate goblin. Oh my god. What are they doing here? They gave us the goblin way and then this. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Oh. Bank Busby. Let's look at him. So he's the he's the researcher. So you got new management, chemical accident, uh, research and development. He's got Cindy, and then you got some bees on the loose. Looks like. Why are you in this, dude? Got to get out. Get out of the business. All right. Let's let's see our new corporate overlord here. Savvy businesswoman Goldie Barrenbottom knows a good opportunity when she sees it. Like the Cinderbrew Meadery. After barging in and swindling Wenbrandt out of business, Goldie, Goldie mostly lets her cronies do the work. Even so, she's not afraid to roll up her sleeves and wallop do gooders herself. Yo! She stomp, spreads the love, she stomped the ground. She stops, stomps the ground with her high heels and bombs rain from the ceiling. Yo! Why are we fighting her? Can't we let her gaslight gatekeep goblin girl boss? Like, why am I gonna have to, why do we gotta stop her, you know? Is she doing bad stuff? Yeah, but you know what? Let her win. Maybe we can let her win. Worst people have won. You know? Alright, so that's Cinderbrew Meadery. Alright, let's look at the other one at the top. The Rookery. The Storm Perch is not only home to the home and rookery of the Storm Rooks, but it's also the barracks and the headquarters for the Storm Ward... Belgrum and the Storm Riders. For thousands of years, the Storm's Perch has stood unbreached by the Earthen's enemies. Unfortunately, defense of the Rookery is harder when the breach comes from within. <gasps> Betrayal. 
spoils. Oh my god, story spoils and betrayal in a dungeon. It's good that they have us do dungeons then. Is there a mountain in here? I don't see no mount, man. I don't see no mount. Alright, Kyros. Kyrios. Stormguard, Gorin, Stormrook. Though corrupted by void magic, still is loyally still loyally fights for fights for by his side. And if anything gets in his way, Kyrios will duly tear them apart. No Kyrios. That looks cool with the purple. That looks so cool. So we fight one of the new griffins. This model, because we got it early, has kind of lost its uh, its hit. But we are getting that cool other uh, new version with the wind effects. It's going to be cool. All right. Ooh. Once Stormward Belgrim's second Stormguard Gorin had been corrupted by void magic, causing his hate for Belgrim to fester. Using his newfound void powers, he seeks to overrun the Storm Perch and command his own army of void riders created from corrupted Storm Rider. Betrayal. Or was he betrayed and then he got corrupted? I like this purple version. Dude, he's got a purple beard. Aren't these supposed to be pretty resistant to the void? I wonder if we'll get like void customizations for the these earth. I don't know. That's just wild speculation. All right. Void stone monstrosity, a grotesque amalgamation of corrupted storm riders. This towering mass of void power knows only pain and how to inflict it. Taking it down is the only way to cleanse the storm perch and its recruit. Oh my God, big big boy. So this is supposed to be like a... No. I know there's Skarden somewhere in here. Stormrider Valkmar. Good dude. Alright, so it's a big guy. It's a big creepy dude. Alright. Eh. Mercury is kind of like, eh. I want to see it. I'm, I am going to take a look uh, when I go in the dungeon. That's going to be good. Uh, um... Now we let's move to the ringing depths. So in there we got the earthen one. But let's start at the top here. Dark flame cleft. Dark flame cleft was once a prosperous earthen mine, but eventually that prosperity ended. Earthen machine speakers moved out, and not long thereafter, kobolds swarmed in. Their workers were soon oppressed by a tyrannical candle king. But not Togwaggle. A tall, bulky brute who towered over his subjects. Obvious wealth was extracted long ago. The real opportunity here is to defeat the last of the king's horrendous henchmen and liberate the, the intimidated kobolds within. What? Liberate the kobold? Hmm? Interesting. Let's get to it. Old Waxbeard. Howdy. Sit a spell. Hear about Old Waxbeard. Kobolds respect this old timer for Taman Wick, the rowdiest mole in creation. Rat Waxbeard's seen folks come and go. Now Candle King's in charge. That don't change nothing. You still need to stay off his property. Why are you here? Go on, get. Oh my god, he's literally attacking us because he's like, get off my property, you kids. I've been in here in these cliff for so many years where he at he just hanging out right here he'd be like i've been here for all these years get off my yard all right oh man dude i hope we don't kill him i hope we don't kill him but it looked like we kill him we're like oh man time to go and then get looted. Take his stuff. Oh my god. And then Wick. He don't drop Wick. So Wick may go down with them. Sad. Alright. Next one. 
Living flame hungers for fuel. Blazicon burns eternal in dark flame cliff. Simmering with malice and rage, loyal kobold attendants worship here. Briz incendiary realm is surrounded by dire darkness. Fanatic kobolds are glad, glad uh, would gladly this monstrosity's hunger be sacrificing by sacrificing you. Would yeah, there's a lot of typos still in the game. All right. Dude, I can tell why it's hungry. Look at how skinny he is. It is. Look at this. Look at these arms. He's a freaking string bean. Too bad. We're going to put him out. We're going to put him out. We're going to... Mm-mm-mm. All right. The Candle King. The fake... In my opinion, the fake king. Togwaggle's the true king. All right, the Candle King. The Candle King was a tyrannical ruler of the Kobold Kingdom. The Kobold Kingdom. Of a Kobold King. There's multiple Kobold Kingdoms confirmed right here. Listen. Multiple Kobold Kingdoms confirmed. Of a Kobold Kingdom. Kobolds and catacombs, canon. What other kingdom are they talking about? Why would they talk about a whole other kingdom if kobolds and canon, catacombs was in canon? His subjects toiled in his mines until an outlander from afar stole his crown and deposed him. Oh, that's gonna be us. Now he's fled deeper within Dark Flame Cliff, seething with rage and threatening to return. Snuff his flame out once and for all. What if the usurper is Togwaggle? That'd be cool. Look at this guy. He got a potion in there. He look kind of cool. He 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 looks old, but he looked like he'll he'll throw hands. The Candle King. Look at him. I like the flame effects. I like the. I'm really liking the candle effects here. All right. But behind the candle king, there is something else. What lurks in shadows? Why do kobolds keep candles lit? Time Dude, this was set up in Legion, by the way. The darkness. Why do kobolds keep candles lit? Tiny creatures huddle around campfires telling tales of ancient evil. The darkness can be defeated, but never... Wait a minute, hold up. Yo, legit, hold up. I for I just remembered. I should have realized this. Yo, this is a Hearthstone card. Hold up. We're bringing it up. Yo, I keep telling y'all, Hearthstone is canon. I keep telling y'all, Hearthstone is canon. Has some canon in it. Look at this. The dark. I know we already had the darkness in Legion, like I mentioned, but he looks very different now. Okay, so the darkness can be defeated but never destroyed. Instead, it inevitably returns in a new terrifying shape. Stay in the light. The darkness waits. Yes. But it does say new terrifying shape, so it's got... Sh Forms the darkness. Oh my god, you can get Wick as a mount. Oh my god, you can get old wax beards mounts. Dude, when I get that mount off of this, I'm gonna be like, pour one out for wax beard. He had to go, but uh, he got me his mount. Wick's lead. Mole Mount, Dark Flame Cliff. Okay, let me just double check. Okay, nothing in there. Uh, nothing in there. Nothing in there, right? Yeah, it's at the bottom, okay. All right, next Ringing Dove's Dungeon, the Stone Vaults. 
Wait, mount? Oh, there is a mount, dude. A mech suit. Oh, that's so good. Machine, two mounts. Two dungeons, two dungeon mounts. All right, machine, ringing depths got the dungeon mounts actually, nice. Machine speakers maintain the stone vault, a facility adjacent to the Hall of Awakening. Their former leader, High Speaker Eric, Eric, was recently deposed after becoming infected with the void corruption. Oh, spoils. While machinists labor and loyalists patrol, Eric hides behind the most fanatic and corrupted followers sequestered behind the Titan Tunnels. He has undergone a terrifying transformation to ensure he never to ensure ensure he never ascends to power again. Your swift innervation is required. All right, Edna, E D N A. Defense protocols engaged. Earthen defense and neutralization automaton is active. Informer normal creature nomenclature Edna. This golem has contingencies for any potential intruder. Killing Skarden is its primary directive, but any unauthorized intruder is sufficient for a lethal response. Okay, so Skarden were something the Titans knew about. Or... Skarden are old, so... That's something. Oh! This is supposed to be Titan tech? Dude, it's got some dragon look to it. Edna. Dude, why does it look like Neltharian built this a little bit? Yeah. Interesting. Did Neltharian know about this island? Oh, he must have known, dude. Oh, he knew. Oh, he knew. Oh, he freaking knew. Alright. Next one. Garmora. The Ice Speaker spent countless years attempting to restore the Awakening Machine. Once failed, one failed attempt resulted in a new horror. A golem infused with Garden Corruption. Crystals augment its elemental configuration. Though it barely communicates its alien mindset, its hatred for all creation is undeniable. Alright, it's a rock. Oh my god, it's a little rock. Okay, I ain't, I ain't impressed. It's a rock. Alright. Master Machinist Brock and Dorlita. Master Machinist focus on complex work at prestigious work sites. Brock and Dorlita have worked as a team for long as anyone can remember. Granted, Brock's pr productivity is slipping, but both are authorized to defend their site with direct and efficient displays of violence. Dude, that's funny. They're like... So she just in the mech suit. I guess she'd be like right up here. And then there's Brock. Bro! Your work is slipping. Management has told everybody about it too. Freaking wow. Void speaker Eric. Eric has been deposed. His author authority seized. Overwhelmed, he fled to the innermost sanctum of the stone vault. Yet his machination yet yet his machinations yet in his machinations he succumbed and transform to transformation. Void energy from the malfunctioning artifact corrupts his living stone. Mystical revelations now shatter his sanity. And he drops them out. That ain't what he looks like. What the fuck? That ain't what he looks like. That's not what he looks like. That ain't what he looks like. We'll have to go in the dungeon and see what he really looks like. What the frick? Here, can we... Oh, it just shows Magna. That's funny. Alright, well. Magni goes bad. No, I think something happens with Magni at the end of that. Alright. Last two dungeons. Both in Hollow Fall. Uh, Fall. Alright. 
So this one uh, I've kind of looked at, so let's go to this. So, the Dawnbreaker. The Rathi have completed construction of their flagship, the Dawnbreaker, a new warship designed with the firepower to turn the tide in this endless war against Az Azhkahed. Been here for 15 years. Full war with spiders. The ceremonial ship launching is about to begin, and General Steelstrike has requested the appearance of heroic outsiders to witness this historic launch. So... I've seen this dungeon done. You're on an airship and you're going around all over the place. Shadow Crown. The new leader of the Order of Night. Shadow Crown forged an alliance with Ashkahet. Oh, betrayal. And masterminded an audacious plan to steal the flagship Dawnbreaker. A former ardent of the from the Priory, she has become consumed by the darkness of Beladar's shadow. Former ardent of the Priory or something like that is what it's supposed to say. Alright. Speaker Shadow Crown. Is she gonna transform or something? You're just a lady. Betrayer. Alright, then we got a new Ika Ikaji Ikaj Ikish. Is one of Queen Anserek's most brilliant tactician, a meticulous planner known for creative use of indigenous resources. His soldiers are fanatically loyal. Alright, look at him. He's a guy. He's invading. We gotta beat him up. And we got Rashanan! A winged horror from the depths of Ashkahet, Rashanan is Queen Anserek's secret weapon to destroy their wrathy should her armies fail to conquer Mereldar. So we beat up this thing and it retreats to the raid. Rashanan. Alright. And then look at this map. It's a dragon riding dungeon, I guess. You fly all over the, the map. Alright, and then the last dungeon. Let's get it. Priory of the Sacred Flames. The Priory of the Sacred Flames was built for ardent worshippers to contemplate the mystery of the Emperor's vision. The Emperor. The Acolyte... Okay, so the Priory of the Sacred Flame was built for ardent worshippers to contemplate the mystery of the Emperor's vision. The Acolytes had become withdrawn from the people of Mereldar, looking down upon them with disdain for their weak faith. In 15 years, man. They were on a good time stable. They were like blasting. Sister Etna Blade. Like some of this had to be going on on the boats. Some of this drama was setting up. Like pre-boats drama was setting up. Sister Etna Blaze has called for help to investigate what secrets lay hidden in the inner sanctum of Priorus Murfrey. 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 Murpray. Don't you tell me about my Murpraying. I'm doing my Murpraying. Alright. Super Murpraying. Yeah, I wonder if the expedition had different groups already coming over and they're giving us a taste of this Arathi culture the best way they can with these. Alright. So I've seen this dungeon done and I want to talk about some interesting stuff in it though. So we got... Oh. Captain Dale Cry commands the grounds of the Priory of the Sacred Flame. He drills the acolytes in the approved martial disciplines of the Empire and ensures that their training and loyalty are of the Imperial quality. Oh my god. He's got mutton chops. Can we do this in game? Oh my god, look at him. Oh, does he got the ears? He does. He's got the ears. All right. Elena Emberlands. And we got Sergeant Shane Mail. And we got Tanner Gilmal. All right, so he's the trainer, and these are his little students. I like the outfits, dude. I really like the armor. Please. So that's good. Baron Bron Pike, distraught over the death of his brother, Baron Bron Pike has pledged his loyalty to the Prioress Murfrey. 
The powerful knight now acts as her personal enforcer, protecting the secrets of the Priory from both outsiders and insufficiently loyal Arathi. Insufficiently loyal. All right. Oh, he's got the mustache. She looked like a villain. But interesting thing. So I've seen people doing this dungeon, and it looks like they get turned into light undead to fight again. But let, oh, there's Priors Murphy. Okay, yeah, she was, okay, 15 years, she had shit cooking when she came over. She had plans and schemes when she came over. She, she old. No offense, but that means she, she could have been brewing this stuff. Because a lot of this stuff for the people here is happening quick. Which is why I think they're basically giving us a little bit of this empire they want to set up down the line. This Arathi Empire. When are we going to see this Arathi Empire again? Who the hell knows? I'll be speculating that at some point. Okay, well let's get through this. Prioress Halsey Murphy directed the building of the Priory of the Sacred Flame to contemplate the sacred star Belladar. Insight into the Emperor's vision has proved elusive. Instead, she has discovered secrets of the Sacred Flame that will bring them victory over the enemies in Hollowfall and at the and at home in the Emperor. Okay, so secrets of the Sacred Flame. I don't know how much Sacred Flame talk, but this has to be some religious stuff coming over from the Arathi. Their Sacred Flame. And... So she's been doing some, like, light magic. And so what I'm getting from this journal, and from what I saw, it looks like she's getting into this light magic and raising undead with the light, which we've seen hints at. You know, we're getting more of these freaking light undead. When are we going to get these light undead? I dropped something. Oh, well. But yeah, those are all the dungeons. We're in a castle ground. Yeah, I'm gonna be checking them out. And uh basically every zone got two. Two in Ringing Depths, two on Hall of Dorn, two in Hollow Fall, two in Ash Cahet. I like that setup. I can't wait to give them a shot. They're gonna have some little lore and we go through them in the main quest line. They have follower dungeon versions, so I think those are some cool dungeons. And uh Thank you for watching as always, and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.